Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this one's just so great. It's with Cole Parkman from Leroy and Lewis in Austin, Texas. It's a long one, so I'm going to make this <laughs> as brief as possible. But if you have the time, it's two hours long, so maybe break it up into a couple times. But this one is chock full of so much information. Cole has such a unique, interesting perspective on everything. He's super nice. He's worked at Truth. He talks in depth about working at Truth. There are so many nuggets of information that he gleaned from from working there especially with leonard that part alone would make this an amazing interview and then we get to the Leroy and lewis side and that is spectacular and he gives us insight into sawyer and evan and brad and the new location this is just i can't thank him enough for taking the time we filmed it over two different weeks so if you're watching on the YouTube side, you'll see a little intermission in the middle that shows the break. But it's just a great one, and you're going to learn so much. And I know that when you do go to Austin, you're going to want to hang out and talk to Cole. So sit back, relax, enjoy this, and be sure to visit your local barbecue joint. Good evening, Cole. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, is today an off day for you? you no, know, I worked today. I worked earlier today. Today, I mean, it's like Monday through Sunday. You know, it's I can work any hour of the day just about it depends i i work a lot there's always something for you to do yeah there's i mean there's almost always something to do yeah monday and tuesday are big prep days so i mean just depending on what the schedule looks like will really be if i work or not this week is a really big event week for us obviously texas monthly yeah this weekend and then we've got like we have like three or four events other than that, like just like smaller, like catering stuff and pickups. And we have like a tailgate party for Toyota for one of the UT games uh, this weekend. Oh, wow. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. We just figured out it's an 11 o'clock game. So we uh, pivoted from chicken wings to breakfast tacos. So that'll be fun. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's good for people to know too. Like that's, you, if you need catering in Austin, that's something that. Yeah. Yeah. We're definitely, I mean, uh, Lauren Lewis doesn't do as much as they once did uh, and not, they don't answer uh, to every catering event now, but yeah, Sawyer and Evan still definitely, Sawyer really, I mean, Sawyer runs it. She does a lot of stuff. It's, I mean, a lot of like a lot of bigger stuff now. We're a little bit busier now. In the beginning, she could say yes to a lot of stuff, but as they've grown, she's gotten away from doing a lot of the smaller stuff. Well, yeah, and also, to, yeah, you have to pick and choose. You have to be smart, and especially now that you guys have a second location that you're working on, it's like for sure, for sure, yeah, hand, it's, like, it's all about stuff. bandwidth. You know, it's like how much, how 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 far can you spread yourself out, really? Definitely. I want to talk about your background and then get into stuff with Leroy and Lewis. But you did you grow up in Texas? I, I don't even know. I don't yeah. know your background. Yeah, so I grew up. Uh, I grew up in the southeast Houston area, which Pasadena, Texas. Which I don't know if you've. You've seen Urban Cowboy. That's where huh? Urban Cowboy was filmed. Yeah. Oh, nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. I grew up right down the street from Gillies. Uh, never saw John Travolta, though, which was no. <laughs> never saw him. Never saw Deborah Winger, you know, but it is what it is. Yeah. I grew up in uh, Pasadena, Texas. I got into barbecue. The guys uh, on my street, we were really close with like all of our neighbors on our street. And they all cooked barbecue and watched football. My dad worked out of state. My dad worked, uh, he worked in like oil and gas, which is big in that area. I'm trying to think, probably 2006 or so, he started, he got a job in Alaska. Oh, wow. Uh, and he worked two weeks on, two weeks off. So he was gone for a lot of football games. And I became a, like a really big football fan and couldn't watch football with my dad. So I started watching with my neighbors uh and like either like my adult neighbors or their kids or whatever i would just go watch football with them like one thing led to another they they always had barbecue and they were like oh you know every man should learn how to barbecue and so you know just like trying to take some work off of them they were trying to show me how to you know like at least pull their ribs off the pit or something like that so, and so they were, were they cooking with offsets yeah they cooked on like a little offset it was oh, uh so the neighbor that really taught me, Larry, he had like the smaller version of what Aaron Franklin like said he had was or what was his first pit in the okay. book, which was the forget the names of all of these now. Yeah, forget too. But, it's like something. Uh, I think it was the Hondo. I think uh -huh. it was just one of the little like crappy little like you bought it from like Lowe's or Home Depot barbecue pits. Yeah. So he had one of those. And I was cooking on that, or I'd cook with them over there on that. And so I think for like my 14th or 15th birthday, I asked for a barbecue pit and got one. And then the next year I asked for a bigger one and got that. 
And then it just kind of, the, I mean, you just kind of go down the rabbit hole. I am so it. impressed at that age. Oh, that is awesome. That's yeah, really, I think young. that's the youngest that anybody it. on this show out of 300 <laughs> something episodes. That's killer. That's really cool. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Here's a quick question. Were those people uh, Dolphin fans too? No, they weren't. Okay. Uh, they were, they were all like, they were all Texans fans. So that comes from my dad, actually. Okay. Yeah, so my dad was a big Oilers fan, and then uh, like right before I was born, ninety seven, the Oilers moved to Tennessee, and my dad was a big Dan Marino fan, and so he just kind of like yeah. latched on to the Dolphins, and so I grew up a Dolphins fan. Uh, I mean, the Texans have you know, the Texans first year two thousand two, so they've basically been a team my whole life, but I just never really cared about the Texans. I watched a lot of their games growing up. I rooted for them, but I never really cared much. Like the Dolphins are my team. The Dolphins were, were like, they've had good years and they've had just awful years. Yeah, too. I was gonna say they've had a lot of good years, <laughs> except for you know the first twenty or so of my life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Though know, they had like some promising years that just didn't pan out. That's what for happened. sure, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, the, the last like 10 or 15 years of being a Dolphins fan has been pretty rough, but, yeah. uh, it, you know, it's paying off this year. It feels so. like it feels good. It's like a fun, it's a fun, at least it'll be, it's a fun year. Let's enjoy it. And yeah, see what no, exactly. Day, right? I, at this point in my life, I have, uh, been, I've, I've come to the understanding that you're not always good. You don't always make the playoffs. So when you do, you really got to cherish that. Yeah, that's what Steve. That's also too. Like when, like I grew up a Laker fan, and the Lakers have been okay. good forever. And so it's like when they don't do well, like you get mad. And so it's it's such a weird. It's when it when you're when you're so accustomed to being because like, their teams no, they've yeah, had really great teams over my lifetime. Like I was I was born in 1970, so it was like there. Yeah. Oh yeah, had, you saw it all then. So yeah. Lots of really, especially with the Magic years and all those like Korea. Like it was just yeah, that's really cool. That was fun to watch. But so this cut back then to your so. At your 15th birthday, then you asked for a bigger one. So I get a bigger pit. I got the like the Academy offset that everybody has started on. Yeah. And it's like I have the same journey after that. You know, it's like <laughs> I watched the Franklin PBS videos. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so right around that time, this is like shortly after the 2013 Texas monthly list. So there were two Houston locations on it at the time. And I read that list like, religiously. And it was Virgie's on the northwest side of town. And and then Gatlin's and that was when Gatlin's was on like West 19th and their original location and I ate at that location quite a few times really like Gatlin's was like the first like barbecue that was like there was anything more than just like the you know like paper thin sliced brisket and then like chopped beef sandwiches and stuff so this was like this was like the first time like really eating like barbecue ribs at a restaurant so Gatlin's yeah. was it. That was your yeah, aha moment. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that was like my first, like, really like, oh man, like Gatlin's is really good. And then, yeah, just kind of like one thing led to another, like really getting into barbecue. 2015, I go to Franklin for the first time. I came to Austin for a Willie Nelson concert. Nice. And then we to Salt Lick the first day and then Franklin the next day. So that was really cool. And yeah, and then it was like Franklin, you know, I already had super high expectations for it. But then I was just like, oh my gosh, like barbecue can be really good. Good, you know yeah and it still blo it still blows me away that they're that consistent like it's not that that you oh have yeah no, like, i mean are, it's so during that time with like the the mayhem like it's the lines aren't as crazy they're still big but yeah the, the, no i mean i drive by all the time the lines are still crazy are they still crazy okay well, yeah me... they are <laughs> i mean you can like the last time i it's been it's probably been almost a year since i've been now but the last time we went we went at like noon and we only waited like an hour and a half oh, cool. but that was on like a random wednesday or something did you think you were always going into barbecue yeah from a pretty young age i remember I'm trying to think it was it would have been the fall of 2014 fall of 2014 first day of school I remember you know they give you those like sheets like what do you want to do what do you want to be like you know you fill out all that stuff and I just remember that was the year that I was like in English class and I wrote I want to own a barbecue restaurant and yeah. that was like I wrote down and that was basically like that was the first time I remember it being like yeah that's what I want to do like this this would be really cool and then basically ever since then it's been like yeah I want to like want to work in barbecue, want to own a barbecue restaurant, want to cook barbecue. Uh, it would be so cool if you had that still. Yeah, I, I know. I think about that a lot. I yeah. wish that I had like, I know my mom kept a lot of that stuff. Well, maybe. So there's a chance it's somewhere, but yeah. <laughs> You'll probably run across it like in 30 years from now. Like, oh. What's 
the funniest part about that is, is I remember I spelled restaurant wrong. So <laughs> it would not, be funny. To have. It's not, I, I, I think when I type it other than like it, it fixes stuff for us nowadays, but I still phonetically write restaurant rest all you run or something. Yes. It, what's funny is that I, I don't know that I know how to spell anything anymore because of like a spell check. Uh -huh. It's bad. It's real bad. It's really bad. And it's also, yeah. yeah and it's weird because it sometimes like it, it predicts what you want to write and poorly sometimes oh yeah i know what you mean yeah it's but, weird it's but yeah weird. like like i'll be typing like i say i type an email you it'll i'll say uh looking and they'll say forward to it like already i'm like yeah oh my, oh my gosh it's <laughs> so weird it's it's so strange <laughs> but i guess for like someday it'll be like send email to cole and then it'll just like <laughs> I'll, I'll assume that it was the right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's soon right. ai will be just writing all of our thoughts for us you know <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which is a bad thing, probably. Yeah, bad. That's why I hit get off the grid soon. Try to get yep. your bets. Yep, you're, you're right. Yeah, open a barbecue joint off the grid. See if you can pull that one off. <laughs> that was, wait, so wait, so then did you go? Did you go to college? I don't know. Like I don't know your path. Did you? Yes. So I grew up like a big Aggie, right? Uh, Texas A M, and a bunch of my buddies. Right after high school, we moved to College Station, oh. and we went to like community college. Uh, not in College Station, but in Bryan, but sister cities. Uh, mm -hmm. So we lived in College Station, went to Blinn, Bryan. Uh, I worked at Texas A&M. I worked uh, what was called special events at Kyle Field. So it was basically just like I had an office. We had like a, I didn't have an office, but our, our like office was in Kyle Field. So I had like thumbprint access to the stadium. Oh, that's cool. Was, like, I got paid like minimum wage and my job was to like move stuff around for people basically but yeah it was like at a lot of the games and it's like on the sidelines for a couple games which was really cool oh, that's super cool uh yeah but i lived there for a year and then like i had wanted to go to AM my whole life and i got there and i was going to class and not going to class a lot of times and basically just decided like i don't know if i really want to do school that bad like this i you know and i had never you know, they gear you the whole time towards like, uh, at least like, which I know it's even more now, but at least while I was growing up, it was like, they really gear you towards going to college. And I never yeah. thought a day in my life that I wasn't going to go to college, wasn't going to get a four-year degree and work, you know, some sort of job. And I think my goal was always to go to college, get a degree and someday own a barbecue restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to college, it was like, I don't want to do four more years of school. Like this sucks. Like no, I don't. It, it makes all the sense. Or I think maybe it's the opposite. I think people might not be going to four-year colleges anymore. I think. I, I think you're right. I think or you're right. Some, yeah. Yeah. So I like spent a year there. I moved home, like really didn't know what I wanted to do. I worked at a like a cafe and bakery that I had worked at for like five, for almost five years, like kind of on and off throughout high school. I had worked at this place. A guy from my church owned it. Uh, so I worked there and when I moved back home, I, I got my job back there and just did like catering and different stuff for them. And then, so that's, so that summer that I moved back, which would have been 2018, summer of 2018, okay. I it was just cooking a lot of barbecue that summer and was listening to, was listening to a Tales from the Pits episode okay. and I heard that, and it was Leonard's episode and he talked about opening in Houston and I'd heard that episode and I remembered that they were, I had forgotten that they were going to open in Houston. So I remembered it then and I sent Leonard an email, I sent Leonard and Corey Taylor an email about getting a job and then never heard back really from either of them until uh, November I got a call from Corey Taylor just saying like, Hey, like we're going to start hiring. Like, are you like still looking for a job? And I was like, Oh, I don't think so. Like I have this, like, I'm like doing this other thing now. Didn't think of it much again. I ran into him one day at Chick-fil-A, like out, like near where I was <laughs> and like went up and talked to him. And it was just, it was a weird coincidence. Anyways, I end up at truth the very first day that they're open uh, I went with a buddy when they opened in Houston. They opened, I feel like Packy remembering all these dates. Yeah. This was January 19th, 2019 was wow. the day. That, uh, it was a Saturday. It was really cold that day. Uh, that, <laughs> that is day impressive. That's opened. so impressive. Wow. <laughs> that was the day uh, Truth opened in Houston. And I went with a buddy and we got in line 
And I like was looking around, I was like, man, this place is so cool. Like it'd be so cool to work here. And Corey walks up and takes my order. And he like, I think he kind of recognized me or maybe he was just being nice, but I was just like, are you guys still hiring? And he was like, yep. He was like, come see me Tuesday. And it's basically come went and got the job from there, started busting tables, kind of in history ever since. Wow, that is interesting. So like all these moments had to happen to make that happen. Yeah, and... for sure. And then somewhere yeah. in between there, that like, it's probably October, November, sometime like in that range, I took a... I took a class with Dylan and all those guys here uh, in Austin. Like when Dylan was teaching the barbecue classes, like at their house. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was, I think like off 10th or 11th, they live somewhere on the East side of town. Was he with Lane and was he living with. Yeah. Which is so funny is like, I knew who Dylan was and I really wanted to be able to like learn from him. I like really looked up to him. I always like admired Dylan. And so I saw that he was doing classes like, oh, man, that's so cool. So that was like my birthday present for my mom. She like got me a, cool. a brisket class with him. So I drove up to Austin and did that. And then he was just like, oh, these are all my roommates who also work in barbecue. And it was like, yeah, you met like Wayne oh, the- and Johnny and Jalen and and New Pond. Like, it was so, <laughs> it's just so weird. You know, he's just like, oh, you know, this is my roommate that works at uh, Micklewaite or, you know, it was like. Like, so like oh, so like so like cool. I have a I have a strange history with barbecue. You have a strange history. Like you were like you <laughs> met them and yeah. like, before they were even you know yeah what for sure were, for what sure. they are in people's minds. I mean they were already yeah they were already people. I just like I had I was you know oblivious to who they yeah. were really. Well, Dylan, yeah. I think a lot of people knew him because of La Barbecue, right? Like it was just kind of for sure. Yeah. Oh, then yeah, did he, he, then he went to Truth, right? Is that yeah? Like, truth. Yeah, Brian? he worked at I think it was Terry Black's La Barbecue, then Truth. Exactly. Yeah, right. I think you're right. It's funny how we all know about someone's career. It's a, it's a weird <laughs> thing. Like like you wouldn't know. Like oh, Jim worked at that coffee that coffee place, <laughs> that place, and then like it's just a weird thing that we know. Brad, Brad and I used to joke about uh, somebody should do barbecue trading cards, like you know, <laughs> like sports cards. I thought about <laughs> like, that. Yeah, listing I mean. their attributes. Yeah. <laughs> I've also thought about like make creating a giant barbecue family tree like where people had gone great. but it's yeah. i started to do it but it was like so it's, difficult. Yeah, it was it's so, so difficult because people move all the time mm-hmm. and then like we were talking earlier there's so many connections that you just don't know about you know yeah definitely Weird it, connections like that yeah, yeah. and then and, the, and all these there's also like the before because this is like all the new age of barbecue but before there was all these like deep roots with like the Millers and then the Blacks and then yes. the, then like uh, the Smitty the, family, the, the, Smitty yeah. and then, yeah that whole yeah. thing and then the McKeskas like there's all this weird oh yeah the McKeska oh my gosh the McKeskas too yeah and then like and there's even Hutchins like there's some bad weird blood with them like it's just a yeah, weird yeah. there's I just can't say, like one of them broke off and opens like Roy Hutchins yeah. or what? I saw that recently yeah, yeah they were still living in Austin and he still had like uh it's funny zane has that pit now and it's like it's like acid washed right it's like not uh-huh. even red anymore but yeah it was, it was still red when i took the class <laughs> <laughs> is zane from zabar is it zabar yes. yeah. So, yeah however you say Sab- it sabar yeah. Yeah. Yes, Sabur. Yeah. Sabur. I, think, I think it's sabor i think he told me yeah i think Sabur. you're right yeah yeah I don't know, something like that. Yeah. That's a thing too. That yeah. would be that would be an interesting thing to like where the pits go because the Hellberg pit has gone around a lot. And that's, that's funny that you say that. So I was talking to Evan on the food truck the other day, and I like one of my buddies was coming in town, and I was telling him that I was telling Evan that my buddy and I used to like skip class in high school and we used to go eat at Papa Charlie's, like Wesley mm. Huran spot like on the east side of uh, downtown Houston. And I was talking about like, we would go there and the food was so good. And Evan starts laughing real hard. And he like points at the warmer we're both standing next to. And he was like, this is Wesley's like warmer from Papa Charlie's. He was like, I bought this like years ago. And I was like, oh man, uh, like what the <laughs> That's so, it's just like small world. And I, yeah, like I've gone is, yeah. through, my, through my interviews over time. People have said, oh, like this food trailer is from blah, blah, blah. Or I got this from this or this pit from whomever. It was just, it's it's really crazy. It, and I think yeah, it's yeah. such a small world. And I think the two, guys from Grasslands got something from against the grain barbecue. Two years ago, we were in Portland, and like one of the first. So uh, Pat, that used to work with us, that's like friends with the Grasslands guys now, 
uh, Patrick Barrett. I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah, like, I think I know his name. Okay, okay. So Pat like is from Portland. He like my girlfriend and I went with him to Portland for like a week in the summer. And uh, the first bar we go into, we like start talking to this couple and it's like a couple that his like sister-in-law is friends with. And she starts like, she's like, oh, I used to live in Austin. And turns out like two of her best friends are Matt and Caleb that own Mill Scale. <laughs> and it's, it's just stuff like that. It's so, such uh, a small world, such a is, small world. It is, it is so strange. It's, 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 it's amazing. And it's also, it's just, it's funny how, how some of it gets clicky and some of it's not and some people like yeah it's that's yeah. great and then like there's and then and then like there's like the the people that all the, the same people that do the um, the events and some people do don't do events and then some people like it's yes like, yeah uh, it's just yeah, it's and like, then there i was thinking about this recently too there is like a whole faction of guys that used to do everything and don't do anything anymore you know yeah it was like 10 years ago it was like when there was an event you can bet that Billy Durney and Wayne Miller yeah. and Sam Jones and all of the, you know, the Fox brothers, all these guys were going to be there. And it's like, man, you don't even hardly see them at anything anymore. I know. It's like a lot it, of those guys, I guess the Fox brothers still do a lot of events, but a lot of those guys, like I, I feel like I hardly ever see them anymore. So I, I took the class with Dylan here and that was kind of like in between like me coming home that summer, uh, in between like me getting the job at truth. But yeah, I took that, took the class with Dylan and he like really opened my eyes. And I always say that Dylan was the one that was just like, oh, you like really want to like cook barbecue and you really want to learn barbecue. He was like, you should just go work at a barbecue place. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. But I was like, shouldn't I go to college? And he was like, I don't know. Like I didn't go to college. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Like I'll just, I'll just listen to you. That You know, amazing. So, so, so were you working at Truth when you had that class or was that right? No, before? no, no. This was before I worked, uh, okay. before I got the job at Truth. Yeah. Okay. And so, so your path at Truth, you were, you started out low man on the totem pole, right? Like you were. Yeah. Cleaning. So I started out uh, like bussing tables and then I like worked up from like bussing tables, the cutting cakes. I sold beer in the line outside. Let's see what else did I do? I worked the cash register. I like scrubbed the floors in the back room. You know, I did, I did whatever they asked basically. And then, so Zach, uh, one of the guys that worked at like Franklin forever, he had moved to Houston for a short time and like helped Leonard open uh, Truth. And was like, he and Leonard were the main cutters when they opened Truth, right? And so he uh, was moving back to Austin and was leaving Truth. And Leonard basically pulled me aside one day and was just like, can you, like, do you want to learn how to cut? Like, do you, like, I need somebody to cut. Like, would you like to learn how to cut? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. That would be like the coolest thing ever. So Leonard basically spent the next like couple months, like, so Zach trained me how to cut for two weeks and then Zach left. And Leonard spent the next couple of months like training me how to cut. And uh, he like moved one of his guys up, Dadrian. And Dadrian had worked with him since like the very beginning in Brenham. Uh, so Dadrian cut. And then I watched, I basically just stood next to Leonard and watched him cut uh, six days a week for like two or three weeks. And basically just sat there every day and watched him cut. And it was the, yeah, it was so cool. You know, he would like, let me wrap the food to go and I would clean for him at the end of the day and stuff. But I like, I had no idea what I was doing. And he just, I mean, he taught me everything. So that's not just cutting brisket. That's cutting ribs, cutting turkey. That's cutting ribs, turkey, sausage. sausage. Uh, yeah. At that time it was ribs, turkey, sausage, pulled pork. It was three different types of sausage and briskets. That's yeah. really interesting. That's a really cool way to do it too, to really get, because like uh, when I did, I just threw, threw right in the fire, like cutting it. I'm like, I haven't. Heard <laughs> yeah, they, they just cut it. <laughs> yeah. So that's in the, but there's there's a way to do it, and there's a right way to do it, and that's yeah. Wow. Oh, that's for sure. Cool. And I mean, to learn from somebody like to, not only to learn from Zach, who like Aaron taught Zach. Yeah. Zach is very very good. But then to also learn from learn from Leonard, and their styles are a little bit different. So like to get both of that was just like it was so cool. And yeah. Leonard was like. Leonard was the biggest guy for me. Like when I got into barbecue is like who I looked up to. So to like directly work with him and to learn stuff like that from him was really, really cool. That's amazing. That I didn't know yeah. that. That's a really, really cool part of your journey. Yeah, it was very cool. It was, it was really interesting. Cause he always told me like, 
this is so important. Like what the cutter does is so important because you learn from this aspect of it. And I was always like, ah, oh, he's probably just saying that's just to make me feel better. Cause I really wanted to cook there. They needed a cutter. So I cut. And then obviously like looking back on it, like when I started cooking and, and when they started letting me cook there too, it was like, it all just kind of made sense. It all tied it together, you know? Wow. And it's like, that's what I like to teach people now. When we trim briskets at Leroy and Lewis, I'm trying to teach them like, think about the finished product, you know, think about like, this is where it starts and think about like, you are there for every aspect of the way, you know, it's like what we start with trimming, like is going to directly affect what happens this weekend, mm -hmm. you know, when we slice it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think in one of the videos, I think it was a smoke point one for Evie Mays and they were yeah. talking about how they were kind of, a, who, whoever it was, I forget who was working with. It's a guy that we all know. I think he went, he moved back home somewhere. oh uh, like nathan nathan yeah there was nathan yeah. yeah and he was saying yeah he was saying that what we're doing here directly affects the, the cutter like your what you're trimming yes. is for the cutter like it's that yeah. logic it doesn't always get translated i think <laughs> no it is it's really interesting logic and then really the the best thing that leonard well leonard taught me a lot but the yeah. best thing and the like most crucial thing that he taught me was to cut a brisket and to look at a brisket and to be able to look at a brisket and know where it went wrong. Hmm. So he would, he would have me take pictures. Right. And then I would send him all the pictures and then he would break down in the pictures why like things were wrong about the brisket and where it went wrong in the cook. And to learn that is really like, that's where I learned everything because it's like, I can diagnose everything now. Wow. You know, I could go back and like, whenever anything is wrong at the truck, I ask the guys all the time. I'm like, please take pictures, please take pictures, send me pictures. And we've got like a, a cook's group chat, right? So you so can those, tell. I'll, I'll do the same thing that Leonard did for me is I'll break it down and be like, okay, well, like, you know, it's a trim it. Uh, trim error or you know if it's like if if it's messed up in, in a certain part of the fatty if it looks like a certain part of the fatty it's like we probably ran too hot in the morning or we probably ran too hot at night or we overcooked it or you know it's just kind of wow it's really what? interesting like, yeah no really it's super interesting information yeah crucial like yeah i talked over you but you said very crucial information no, no, no you're good you're good yeah that's no that's and that's interesting to you too because i wonder like you can't speak for leonard but like how did Le how did leonard's brain get that way like how, like how do people get that because you know, like I, you know, I don't know I guess time, I right? think yeah I don't know I think it was I mean he had a lot of trial and error in the beginning and then I know like I know he's always been really close with Wayne and I know Wayne really helped him with a lot of stuff and then I know like Dylan working there also like they both I think made each mm -hmm. other a lot better yeah I don't know I, I really don't know. I, I never... should go back to my interview with Leonard and watch it again. <laughs> it, yeah. I'll put a link below. People, it was for a long, like, <laughs> yeah. it was so long ago. I haven't talked to him in a long time, and it's. I'd be curious to see. Now hearing this, it's just interesting to see like how certain certain people just get it. It clicks and for sure. Like, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. Like his thought process on all of that stuff yeah. in barbecue is is just really interesting. Truth but... understood like Leroy and Lewis understood the importance yeah. of sides, the importance of like that. It was a full meal. And then the desserts were like, it was for it was sure. For sure. Of, Family owned restaurants. Yeah, exactly. That's probably yeah. where it came from. Yeah. And they had, they had a lot of really nice restaurants. I don't know about like, fine I, mean, that's it. I can't remember. Like really nice places. Yeah. <laughs> so then you eventually graduated to cooking. Were you cooking with Joe at the time or cooking with uh, Fletch or. So I cooked. I'm trying to think if, I cooked a little bit with Joe. Fletch was there. Fletch got hired like a after. few weeks after I did, but I was part time in the beginning. I don't think I said that. I was part time. I was still working at the other restaurant. Oh, okay. And then I left like when Leonard needed a cut. Well, I got fired from the last job. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a really funny story actually <laughs> yeah i basically i basically like wanted to put a two i wanted to put in like a really long notice of that place because i'd worked there forever i knew i still know all those people i'm really close with them all and i like tried to give them like a one week notice and they were like no just don't come back and i felt really bad about it i i helped my boss move into his new house uh the next week because i felt so bad about it oh, that's, that says <laughs> a lot about you <laughs> yeah but no we, we've since made up it's okay yeah. but yeah okay yes yeah, so fletch uh fletch got hired a couple i think like a, a few weeks after i did yeah. 
I, cause I would pick up like random pit shifts here and there uh, after I had been there for a few months. Yes. Yes. My very first pull shift was with Joe. I don't know why I forgot about this. My very first pull shift was with Joe because we pulled like 60 briskets or something that night and they were all terrible. So bad. They were so bad. And so explain terrible to everyone. What does that mean? They were just really overcooked. They were really overcooked. And I, you know, I didn't really know much, uh, but Joe was kind of like, he knew that I was really eager about all of this stuff. And was just like, yeah, you know, like, let's, let's do this. Like you tell me when they feel good. And I had no idea what I was looking for because, and that's another thing about it too, is that like a done rested brisket feels less cooked than a done brisket when it's freshly coming off the pit. Right. Yeah, because it's like during the rest, everything starts to seize back up. And so it's like, you know, you're feeling the muscle fibers and, and you're trying to feel for it. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, but it's like it's I don't know. It's way further. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. So explaining that the way I explained it would make me think that I should have pulled them under. But instead, I pulled them way over. So I don't know why I did that. But yeah, we. So we what do you do with like that many terrible briskets? So what happens? Oh, man. I mean, you have a lot of chopped brisket. Yeah, I remember. Uh, Leonard came in the next morning. He was like, he would always walk in every morning and ask me the same thing. He'd say like, how are they? And I would always be like, they're good. And he would always say like, that's all you got for me. Like, you don't have anything else for me. And I just remember him. He was like, how are they this morning? I was like, they're bad. Oh. And he was like, how bad? And I was like, they're, they're bad. And yeah, that was like a big, that's still a joke between he and I about how bad the, between he and I and Joe about how bad all those briskets were. That so day. that was like a, that was an anomaly. Like that doesn't, that, that oh, yeah, was like a bad, yeah. that was a bad. That was a really bad cook. Yeah. I want you to answer the question about the pits at Truth. No one's ever told me, and I've been trying to figure out who built the pits at Truth. Do you know? So it was a guy, you're asking the right person here. Uh, it was a guy named Clint Shockey in East Texas. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, I love uh, the I... <laughs> No, really, really, and truthfully, it's funny. I don't know why I remember his name, but I remember his name. I met him one time. He came by. He had like a, he had a really big lifted Tahoe. <laughs> he came. He was That's like, hilarious. He the weekend in Galveston or something and came <laughs> by and ate. He just wanted to see the pits, I think. So he, uh, so, he, so he was just like a welder or he was a pit maker? He, yeah, I think he owned a pit making company. I have no idea if Leonard was. Like, East, was it called East Texas but, Smokers or something? Yeah, like it's like East Texas Smokers or something okay. like that. I think that Zabe from uh, Smoke and Z's has one. Oh, really? He has one like the same build as Leonard. Because I know that, you know, Leonard has that thousand uh, mil scale. But mil I, scale, yeah. yeah. So that's There's, a really great pit. That's a killer pit. And it has. Yeah the has a beast yeah it has one of those burn barrels burn barrel, yeah. santa maria it has a prep table it's a transform it's, really- it's a transformer it turns into a car and i think it's a- <laughs> yeah exactly it drives you around yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really amazing that's why you never see leonard anymore because he's always <laughs> <laughs> he's just right back in there. he's like, solving crimes fighting crimes and he's uh... <laughs> <laughs> no but that's okay so okay thank you for telling because i i've been trying yeah, that because i've always been interested in it's so there's four thousands in there, right? It's been so long. I think there's five or five. Is it five? There's five. There's right. Yes, there's five. There's five. It's sad that it take it took me that long, but yeah, there's five. So there's two that are back to back. No, there. Yeah, there. There are two sets of ones that are back to back, and then there's the one, the first one in the okay. front. Like, kind of back to itself. back. You mean like attached, like? Well, uh, just just like uh, against, just, against each other. Back like that, yeah. yeah. What was it like before? Because <laughs> you've got other other parts of your journey to talk about. But what was yeah. it like? What was that volume like dealing with on the on the trimming side, on the cooking side, on the cutting side? What's really What's really interesting? Not to cut you off. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Don't uh, need to. What's really interesting about Truth is at least when we first opened, it was you know eleven to like three or eleven to sell out really every day, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. And it was the same people who worked basically every day, six days a week. And we all basically had like very specialized tasks. So when I was cutting, that's all I did basically six days a week for a long time. And then if I worked a pit room shift, it was just like either a morning or an afternoon shift. And you may have trimmed a little bit, but there were a lot of guys that would come in 
later in the evening and trim. And that was their only job basically was to trim. And then that. now yeah. those trim guys like make sausage and do all that stuff. So like some of the, so the pit room guys, I, I never worked back there like a ton, but I like, yeah, we would make sausage like every once in a while we would grind sausage. We would trim ribs every once in a while, but yeah, like once they kind of started to get going, it was, everybody had a very like specialized task. Yeah. Was that tiring cutting for that amount of time or was that just, because you had done it for so long, it was. Just... I, you know, I mean, like it's funny because I get tired now doing that stuff, and I'm probably just more out of shape now. <laughs> uh, but when I was doing it then, I, I mean, it, I just I didn't know any better. I That's just funny. did it all day. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was what it was. And, uh, and there too you had like a line all day so it was like i, I know that's what that's the, that that sounds like it would be, be be more tiring but i guess it's not you're just busy and then you just like forget you forget that you have a line when it started to get slow is when you really realized like oh man the, this is dragging on i gotcha gotcha before we jump to the the next part of your life what was your favorite thing to what was your favorite dessert my favorite like? dessert at true i think before i worked there it was always the banana I don't even know what they call that. The banana caramel cake, I guess what they call it. They like pop it with heath and it's like topped with caramel. I think while I was working there, my favorite dessert. So Leonard's mom, like Mr. Da- Miss Janelle, she started doing Tres Leches while I was there. And the Tres Leches was really good. I don't even like chocolate cake, but her chocolate cake is phenomenal. I don't know. That's a really, that's a hard question. I yeah. probably ate the most of the Tres Leches. Yeah. Well, that's because uh, even though, I think like, I'm not a huge dessert guy, but when I go to yeah. Texas, I'm going to try every dessert. I'm going to try yeah, a little bit of every, every side, every dessert. It's, <laughs> I'm just going to be silly, but it's, but I definitely want to. You're like, going to get a hundred pounds when you come. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to also walk a lot, but I'm just saying, I just want to, I really want to try truth desserts because they just look ridiculous. Like all their food look really good, but it's just, yeah, that's a great place. A good, that's a, not a bad place to start. No, no, it was, I mean, that was. It was really cool. That was always like my favorite barbecue place. So it was really cool to start there. Yeah. So then were you always itching to move to Austin? Yeah. I mean, basically from the first time that I ate at Franklin, I was like, I really want to live in Austin. And I really wanted to work at Franklin. It just like never really lined up. I kind of like had some opportunities to maybe go and work there. But it it just like when I when I was leaving Truth, I just wanted to leave Houston. It didn't necessarily matter where I went. Well, hold on, let me backtrack, actually. Okay. So right before COVID happened, I was going to move to Nashville oh. and help uh, one of my buddies open a barbecue place there. And he was doing like just like small pop-ups and stuff. And he was coming to Austin to take the Leroy and Lewis barbecue class. And he called me and was like, do you want to come take this class with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I'd, I'd like to go to Austin. I'd I had never been to Leroy and Lewis. So I was like, oh, that would be really cool to go to Leroy and Lewis. And uh, when he asked me, I was in Waco seeing Blake that day because Blake was doing like a pimento cheese pop up at uh, at Hellberg while uh, while Tyler Harp was cooking a hog at Hellberg in Waco, which is so random. So funny. This is all like early like, 20 i remember this so like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> so this is all like january 2020 and i'm there with packy and he and i had driven up from houston together and we were like discussing where we should go eat next we we're like where should we go where should we go and he was like i'm gonna text brad and he was like let's go to Leroy and lewis and i was like oh that would be perfect I was like, my buddy just asked if I want to do the barbecue class there and you have to get like accepted. So I was like, I can just like ask them about it or whatever. And he was like, okay, cool. Let's go to, let's go to, Leroy, let's go to Leroy and Lewis. So we go, so we drive from Waco to Austin and we get to Austin like late in the night, but like probably like eight 30 or so. And Leroy and Lewis like still had some stuff. So we got like a burger, uh, beef cheeks, like a barbacado. I think we had like, I think there was whole, I think we had everything. I think it was whole hog, cheddar cheesecake and pork hash. And I remember all of that stuff. Right. And I remember like Brad helping us and Sawyer helping us, but I had no idea who Sawyer was. We went and sat at the table and Packy was like, do you know who that was? And I was like, well, I know Chud, like this was before (laughs) the YouTube channel, but I followed everybody on Instagram, right? So I like knew who everybody was. So I was like, yeah, of course I know who Brad is. Yeah. I was like, that's so cool. 
And I had like briefly met him at Texas Monthly, but Evan and them had done a pop-up in the summer. This is going way back now. It's okay. Evan it's great. And done a pop-up in the summer and I had met Evan and Clayton and Matt, uh, guys that worked at Leroy and Lewis. And it's funny, Sawyer was there, but I never saw her that night. So I had met Evan and I saw Evan and Brad again at Texas Monthly that year. So November, 2019. Uh, and I met Brad for the first time. Anyways, this is January, 2020. Yeah, we go back, we sit down with our tray at the table and Packy's like, do you know who that was? I'm like, yeah, I know Brad. And he was like, but yeah, that's Sawyer Lewis, like the Lewis over Leroy and Lewis. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, I was like, I always wondered who the Lewis was. <laughs> like I never knew who it was. Well, yeah, because she kind of stays in the background. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And so I was like, okay, cool. And then we go back up after the meal. We're like, oh, everything's really good. And I tell her like, oh, hey, like, I think I'm going to come take the class. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. She was like, just like. She was like, I'll like, uh, make sure you get accepted or whatever. Like, uh, just send me an email. It's like, okay, cool, cool, cool. So I think I was supposed to go class. to that class. I think I, I heard, I've heard that. Yes. Right. I have a, I still have like a credit for a class that I never took. Yeah. Well, what's funny is because that was the end of February, beginning of March. And so y'all had probably heard of COVID already. Right. But I had yeah. never heard of it. Mm -hmm. Like it hadn't, hadn't made its way to Pasadena, Texas yet. So <laughs> I hadn't heard yeah, We were it. holding it back. It was like up in Seattle at the time. Yeah, exa yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. That's weird. Yeah. I think I was supposed, that was supposed to be. In that's the funny because we, we could have been in the same yeah. class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have to ask all these questions. I would have known the answer. <laughs> so you did take that class. Yeah. So I took the class. It was going to help. Well, I was going to like move uh, to Nashville and like help my buddy Chris like do something. And then like COVID obviously happened, that all kind of fell through. I was still working at Truth and just like really wanted to leave Houston. Didn't necessarily want to leave Truth, but wanted to leave Houston and was like, oh, I don't know, like where I want to go, what I want to do. And I was like, I, I think Austin, like, I think I'll move to Austin, right? I like knew some people here at the time. So I was like, okay, I'll move to Austin. I called Joe and Joe and I talked for like an hour and we're basically just like, I was like, where, where should I go? Where should I work? What should I do? I wanted somewhere that was smaller. So I always really like, I was always really like envious of those who had worked at Truth Brenham because they kind of got to see the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I would, I like, liked the romanticism of like Dylan and Leonard, like sleeping on cots and stuff yeah. like that. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, man, that's so cool. So I wanted like Nick or Lil Run Lewis or like a food truck or something small or even like the barbecue at the time was still like just in like the quickie picky. Yeah. So he like Joe and I talked and we basically were just like, Oh, it'd be cool to like basically work anywhere. But like Leroy and Lewis would be cool, but I doubt they're hiring. And like just walked away from it with that, with the intention to still move here, just didn't know where I was going to work. To me, it didn't matter. Yeah. I was like, I just want to work at barbecue. I'll, I'll move to Austin. I don't have to work wherever for like super long term. I can kind of, you know, go wherever, do whatever. Like, I just wanted to get here. Fast forward a couple of weeks later, I like, and telling the guys at work, like, oh, I think I might move to Austin. And Reed, uh, the, like Reed Carson that works at Truth, he like, he sent me an Instagram message from Leroy and Lewis and they were hiring a summer intern that year. Ah. And uh, he was like, oh, like, here you go. And I was like, oh, I guess that'd be kind of cool. So I like email uh, or I text Joe. I'm like, hey, like they want you to write like a cover letter for this. I'm like, you I'll probably get the job if you write me the cover letter. And he was like, yeah. And Joe didn't want to write the cover letter. So I like wrote the application and everything, sent the application in, but I didn't send the cover letter yet. And I kept pestering Joe like, hey, can you write that cover letter? And he basically just like text Brad and Evan and Sawyer and was just like, hey, like Cole, like wants, Cole Parkman wants to like, get a job with y'all. He wants me to write the cover letter. I'm not going to write the cover letter, basically. And they were just like, yeah, if you vouch for him, like he doesn't need to write the cover letter. You know, it's like, oh, cool. uh, or you don't need to write the cover letter or whatever. And the way I've been told about that, uh, the way Brad has told me about that occurrence, at least like coming back on it now is Sawyer's idea was to hire an intern. And in the meeting, and this is the way Brad has told me this, that in the meeting, she goes, she was like, we need to hire a summer intern. She was like, I want to hire somebody young, somebody like Cole from Truth. And so they said when I applied, they were like, oh, I guess we have to give it to him. Because <laughs> it was like, you're the example. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I guess, it, you know, for better or worse, I guess it worked out. That's so funny. That's cool. That's very cool. That's summer. the way Brad has always told me the story, at least. So this is the summer of 2020. 
So this is, yeah, this is like, I got the job the beginning of June of 2020. So this is probably like, yeah, like April or May of 2020. So was it, was COVID? So COVID, I mean, COVID was still going on, but in <laughs> my mind, I was just like, oh, like two weeks to flatten the curve. Like we're yeah. done with this soon, you know? Yeah. It's like, I hadn't even worn a mask yet. And then I moved to Austin and then this mask mandate comes out and I was like, yeah. oh, I guess I better start wearing a mask. <laughs> then for the next two years, I wore a mask. Well, I know. It was, just, it was, it was such a, uh, that time too, like we talked about a bunch of different times that feels yeah. surreal. Like that feels that time surreal until so you were probably so surreal with- and it was like looking back on it, it's such a weird dumb time to move but i'm glad i did it was just yeah. like a weird time to move well, when Leroy yeah. lewis was doing like market they, they turned their stuff into a market almost and they there was a whole there was a whole thing yeah right? i mean so they had moved they moved out into the parking lot but they had moved they had just moved back into cosmic and cosmic had just reopened like a week or two before i got there i think it was weird weird times yeah. so then were you just doing everything up, yeah so the mix? I was like the quote-unquote like intern so i was working just like three or four days a week like technically part-time and my very first day was like a prep day with brad and like just had no idea what i was doing didn't so, like showed up and didn't have any knives like had to i used brad's knives for like a whole year which looking back on it is so like when the guys don't bring knives in now i'm like what are you doing I have to like remind myself that I am the same person too, you know? <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't have any knives. Like took me like two hours to cut a case of kale, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. From the, from the very get go though, it was like, it was exactly what I wanted. It was like walking into Leroy and Lewis was being able to like see like the trimming of the brisket to the slicing of the finished product. It was, mm-hmm. you know, cutting the kale, mixing the slaw, serving the slaw, you know, making the Caesar dressing. Like when I got hired on at Leroy and Lewis, there were eight of us. And I was like the first employee they'd hired in like two years. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it was was really weird. It's super weird because there's 22 or 20 people now on staff. Wow. Which is crazy. Yeah. I think it's it's 20. Is that because of the mama... Uh, Mom fried too, but I mean, it's just like we do a lot more volume now. That's crazy. You have a commissary kitchen. We have a commissary kitchen, yeah, okay. yeah. It's it's really interesting. It was like just immediately got to see all of it, which was so cool. I had zero kitchen experience either. Like, I had the, the on my stage, Evan like hands me an onion, and he's like, "Can you cut this onion?" And uh, he's like, "So, like, what do you think you could like?" get better at and i like put the knife down and look at him i'm like i don't know how to cut an onion so i'd like to get better at this (laughs) and i spent the whole day before like i called my grandpa and i was talking to my mom i was like how do i cut an onion i don't know how to cut an onion they all had formal training or more formal training than you yeah yeah so i was like i don't know i was like i kind of know how to trim a brisket but i don't know how to cut an onion you know hey that is so interesting yeah now uh, I can cut it in and now I can trim a brisket. So yeah, I don't know so that you got good at either of them, but I, I can do it. So, so you, can't, you can cut an onion for sure. I can cut an onion now. Yeah. yeah. I'm not the best onion cutter, but I can cut one. At the beginning, like how, how does like how does it work now? Like are you because like you said, you almost any day of the week you could be scheduled or like is are you yeah. on a, are you on a set schedule now or are you kind of no, like, I'm not on a set schedule now. I think uh I think once we open the restaurant, I should be on like a little bit more of a like consistent set schedule. But yeah, for right now, it's like I'm gonna work for at least four days a week every week. But yeah, I mean those days are sporadic. And I've always kind of let it be that way because I'm young. I mean, yeah. Casey and I don't really have i mean we have two cats but that's it you know we don't have kids we don't have any responsibility outside of work so it's like i've always been like i'll do whatever you know i work like cashier shifts still or uh like opening or closing shifts or you know we've we've got a bunch of shifts now but yeah i just i try to do anything i try to be i try to be you know very easygoing and kind of just fit in wherever they need me that's smart that's helpful that's good to have someone like yeah. that or, or multiple people like that that's for sure yeah yeah i think most everybody on the staff is is just about like that too which is really nice but yeah, yeah. i've never i've never really cared so i i think after a few years of it it's like i would like to have a more consistent schedule but i also like i like having a random you know like wednesday or yeah. thursday off and 
I'll shoot down to lock hard or something, you know, it, it's fun. Yeah. That's cool. Well, did you meet Casey through the restaurant? No. So she is one of my like best friends, cousins. Oh. And so I've known her since she was like 12. I've known Casey like forever. And uh, after I moved to Austin, I knew she was moving here to go to UT. And uh, so I was like, oh, you know, I like, I should like be friends. You know, I should be friends with Casey again. You know, so, <laughs> like one thing kind of led to another. Yeah. And yeah, we, uh, we'll we celebrate three years this Sunday. That's big. Sunday. That's good. That's yeah. awesome. Wow. We'll but she works. Actually celebrating our three year anniversary. <laughs> That's so nice of them to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that's no I, I i think daniel had mentioned that he wanted to put it on for you guys so that's really <laughs> yeah you know that makes a lot of sense yeah, yeah they were gonna do it the next weekend but then they pulled it <laughs> specifically for it's, you it's very sweet man yeah, you know he's the, he, he always tries to make make it important like that that's like <laughs> <laughs> around someone someone random yeah guy. you know you know <laughs> more important than you know celebrating the best barbecue in texas yeah exactly. yeah. yeah yeah that's <laughs> that's an afterthought well no so it's, but she works at mama mama fried is that she works at Mom and Fry, but she also works at Little Run Lewis. Yeah. Okay. And okay. So she'll be at uh, she'll be at like the restaurant when we open it too. And you you guys did, did was that something that you guys did together? The kind of old school barbecue day or something or some kind of. Yeah. So so it's funny. Casey moved here, and she is a she was a theater major in school, and I basically was just like I cook barbecue. She knew I had always like I obviously we've known each other for a long time. So she knew I was really into barbecue, like even then. And so she knew I was like here cooking barbecue and everything and moved here like theater major. And I was like, whatever you do, just don't get into restaurants. Don't, don't do restaurants. Don't do this. And so she had worked at like a pizza place in Tomball. She moved here, worked at another pizza place here for a little bit. And I was like, just don't do, don't do restaurants, you know, do something but she like quickly learned that she didn't want to do theater and she like didn't really know what she wanted to do. And I had like a lot, I, I've always had a lot of passion for restaurants and stuff. And I think as much as I like pleaded, like for her not to do restaurants, she was very adamant on being like, I want to do this restaurant. And like, she was like, I want to like help you follow your dream, you know? And so that's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, couldn't ask for a better partner. Yeah. Yeah, the old school barbecue thing kind of just naturally, very organically happened. I've always wanted to own a place. I've always wanted to do something. I, You know, you get kind of jaded on it for a little bit because you work in it and you see how much effort goes into it. And you see that like there's so little money to be made and the profit margins are so thin and it's so much work. And, you know, it's so little glory and all of this stuff that I, you know, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do until I moved here and I started going to Lockhart and I started eating at Kreitz and Black's and Smitty's. And it was like, this barbecue just like changed my life yeah. all of a sudden. I mean, this, it's so different than what we all do, but yet it is like, you know, like craft barbecue is a derivative of Central Texas yeah. style. What we do, we call it Central Texas style barbecue, but it's not, you know, it's it's craft barbecue. What they do is is true Central Texas style barbecue. And so it's like the first time I went to Giddings or, you know, I grew up going to Luling City Market, but then to go back and eat it was like, oh man, like. Yeah, I can't wait to do that again. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. Especially for you. It's, so you've got a chance to kind of like, it's like the beef clod and like all yeah, those the things. Clod, like those. Really what, really what opened my eyes to it was the sausage at Kreitz. Uh, which I wasn't wearing this hat on purpose. It was just, that's just what I happened yeah. to be wearing. But yeah, I had this sausage at Kreitz and I mean, it just like, it was the very first sausage that I had eaten that I was just like, man, this is so good. And it doesn't taste like anything else. Like, why does it taste like this? So I kept going back and kept going back and kept going back. And I had eaten sausage a bunch of times and I knew that I didn't like sausage at some places. And I knew that I liked it at some places, but I didn't know anything about it. So then that same way that Leonard approached brisket, I started to try to approach sausage that uh, way. And it all started with the Kreitz sausage. I started asking people, I was asking Brad and Evan, I was like, how do I do this? Like, how, how do I make this sausage? And uh, they were both like, oh, you know, it's like salt and pepper and like probably all beef. And, you know, like you do this or you do that. And then I like kind of started to get into sausage making. I had obviously like worked with Brad and watched him do it, but 
right after, right before I started working is when he launched the YouTube channel. So I was watching all of the YouTube videos and then he like, you know, he left at some point too, kind of, and then I really started watching his sausage videos. Yeah. Same with me. Being able to ask him questions was, was really great. And so yeah. he was, you know, I was like learning through the videos also like getting to learn firsthand from him and just started making sausage. And then I started like really, really trying to make the Kreitz sausage. So I asked like, I, you know, I text like Bill Dumas and asked him if he knew anything about it. He didn't know much about it. I was like, I asked Lane, like, you know, like, what do you know about it? And like, we, uh, our kitchen manager that works with us is like a sausage savant. He's the best. His name is Matthew Bromley. Oh, and wow. he is one of the like best, He's he's one of the best people ever, like one of my favorite people, but his, he's a really, really great sausage maker. Obviously like working with him, I was able to ask him a lot of questions and Evan and, and Brad and all these people. And I finally just like really was trying to nail this sausage recipe down and started to learn like this or that. And then like, finally just got it to where I like made it one night and I like went and like put a link on the smoker and brought it back in and uh pat was there he was washing dishes and i was like holy shit like i did it i was like i, I like i did it i was like this tastes like this is good i was like it's good that, like uh. you know it obviously like wasn't there yet or anything it, 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 i've never made a sausage that i think is better than kreitz but i was like this is close like i'm getting somewhere and it was just it was it was a really really cool feeling. It was yeah, like what a, what a rediscovering, moment. re like refining that love for barbecue again. And that's really where it all started for my love with like old school barbecue was just like getting into that sausage and then like figuring out like how to make that sausage and how to do it. And I think what really was the biggest factor in all of it was that it's simple. It's like, I tend to overcomplicate things, right? And so it's like this sausage that I make has three ingredients and it's so good. And then I was just like, oh man, like everything they do is that way. Like at Kreitz, all they season with, at least what they say, all they season with is, you know, salt, pepper, and like cayenne. Yeah. And it's table salt and like big cracked pepper, you know? Yeah, and it's exactly. Like, yeah and it's so funny and it's like they don't rotate or you know it's like no. they don't trim the briskets or no and it's so different you know it's i mean it's hot and fast you know like i, I know you know about that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> yeah, no, yeah it's it's, it's, the, like, it's it's the old it's like the like yeah like the louis miller meets louis, that, yeah louis all miller's that, all about, yeah. like yeah man it's, it, a it, it's, it's a different it's and it's amazing that like a place like those places don't have necessarily lines at the door like a snows, but it's also snows has a different and there's an entity at snows that exists that's different than you know it's it's yeah there's there's different factors as to why places are so popular, but it yeah. is it is I hope that those places always still exist because me too me so, too like and I, I that's actually like the one of the first places I want to go to when I go back to Austin like I want to go to all the great places in Austin that have opened yeah. since I've left but. Like yeah but you want to go back there because it's like it's preserving a piece of history yeah you know? and i love how the tables have like they're worn like it's smitty's where it's worn from people's hands like i love walking into an old, yes. old uh an old post office and you see where people have been standing on the floor because you see it worn away yes i, know what you're I love that about. so much i think that there's it's that's, so cool that's humanity I mean, it's living life, history but... you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no mm -hmm. it's really i like i had always like always say that barbecue is just accumulation of all the things that I had been interested in over my life. It's like, I was always really into like, uh, like history, but like with a real emphasis on like Texas history. And I was always really into country music. I was always really into football. I was always really into cooking. And then it all just, you know, barbecue is what ties all. Yeah, the it is. The bond. Yeah. Kinda. That's, wow. That's crazy. Well, Cole, what do you, what do you think about candy corn? <laughs> I like candy corn. Yeah, it's I enjoy it. Yeah, we were off I think that we I, about? <laughs> I think I realized this year that I like the I like the chocolate one the most. Oh, I haven't had I don't know if it's chocolate, but it's brown at the end. It's not like the traditional. It's orange, it's but then it's brown maybe. at the end. Maybe okay. it is caramel. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's probably not chocolate. That would be weird. Or it could be also uh like a fudge. I don't know, some kind of. I don't know. I also oh. like the pumpkins. I I always buy the yeah. mix. 
Uh huh. That there's some there's some really wacky like they come out with ones during Easter too like really. Well, uh, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's they've got the same stuff that she did redye it. Yeah, no, I think it's like peep, <laughs> peep flavor or something like that. Like those peep. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they have they try to market those all. Year. I mean, and they're just circus peanuts basically. Yeah, and they and their peeps they also I have know. a they had a Pepsi a peep Pepsi. That's weird. That's gross. But so so you were off camera. You had said you listened to something about uh candy. yeah, listen to something about uh candy corn i don't remember as much as i should but i remember basically they marketed it as like candy corn and like dyed it like uh corn because it was like to coincide with the harvest and so they marketed it like as like a fall like halloween thing but basically like it took a real nosedive when uh it became less acceptable to uh (laughs) just give loose candy out for halloween which really got me thinking that that had to be a really disgusting uh, time to receive candy. I go full of people are just <laughs> you're just walking around with a bag and they're just sticking stuff. Yeah, like there. a big and, and at the end of the night, it's all like stuck to your wrappers and stuff. Yeah, well, I'm sure they're giving those popcorn balls then too. The popcorn <laughs> balls yeah. probably stuck everything on them. Well, I when I went trick or treating when I was a kid, I do remember people giving out apples, like caramel apples, and oh, so really? I thought. And I, I kept thinking, like, and then they later on, you know, they talked about people putting like razor blades and things in them, and then that had just stopped. Yeah. But people would give fresh things out at Halloween. That's crazy. Yeah. Did you, have you ever bobbed for apples? I have never bobbed for apples. I've, I've asked this question to somebody else too. Have you? I was gonna say I I don't know anybody that has ever bobbed. I think the myth. I don't think I don't think anybody has ever actually done it. Well, have you done, ever done a pie eating contest? No, I mean I've seen people do that. I feel like that, like yeah, that exists more. for sure. Oh yeah. no, I wasn't saying like the myth part. I was just no, 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 no. I never. Yeah. Like, done no, have fitnesses. you ever done a pie eating contest? No, I feel like I would. I feel like I would break my nose. Honestly, like I feel like I would be like so an- anxious. That I, would <laughs> I don't understand. I just, I don't understand like the, the need to do that. I don't <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't you want to eat a pie, eat a pie, I don't know. <laughs> well, I think it's just they needed to figure out things for like for fairs and events. And yeah, things and no, I guess it makes sense. But it's like did like the guy who got, I, I think I can, I've seen things where like the guy gets the girl because he got, won the pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Hallmark stuff right there. <laughs> yeah, that, that is some, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> that does show that I would take care of my mom and I have seen it. <laughs> you just catch a classic glimpse of it here and there. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. With Leroy and Lewis, how, describe for someone that doesn't know Leroy and Lewis, can you describe how would you describe Leroy and Lewis to an outsider or well I think uh I think there's a couple answers to that. I think the uh the first answer would be the company answer where uh we're a new school barbecue truck with old school service. <laughs> that works. <laughs> no, I think that I think the real answer to that, and I think the better answer to that is really Leroy and Lewis is just like all of craft barbecue is the derivative of like central texas style barbecue so i think that you take Leroy and lewis and you take evan's mindset of evan and sawyer's mindset of farm to table locally sourced just like caring about where everything comes from and then you take evan's mindset of this like and also the mindset of like craft barbecue right it's like being a derivative of Central Texas style barbecue. He basically looked at it and said, and it is really great. He's, he always says that it's a method and not a menu. And so really what that means is that you just take the offset smoker, you take the direct heat smoker, you fire it with, you know, all post oak and you just, you just use salt and pepper. It's like very simple, very simplistic, very traditional methods, but just like applying that to different cuts of meat. So, you know, we do the beef cheeks and the cauliflower burn-ins and the barbacoa and the whole hog and all of this different stuff that, you know, when he started and when they started wasn't traditional to any of this stuff. Now it's all kind of caught on more. But, I mean, really and truly, like, when they term, when they, like, coined that term new school barbecue, they were really the only people, like, yeah. doing it. I mean, the granary, you know, I think the granary opened in, like, 2013, and obviously, they like really pushed the limits in San Antonio, and then yeah, obviously more, it was more like in high end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. What he was doing at Friedman's, they like kind of pushed the envelope there. And I'm sure there's a, like a few other places that I'm forgetting, but those two are the two that I think of that like really like caught on quick, 
like in this movement and like wanted to elevate it and wanted to make it more. And I think Leroy and Lewis like in different terms, but like in more relatable terms, instead of being like, okay, like come and like have these fancy cocktails and let's do this and that. Mm -hmm. Like, let's just take this method and let's build a menu that's sustainable off of this. And so I really think they kind of a... like, they got both of those right. Yeah. And you're, and you're eating it out of a food truck. So it's not um, heavy handed. It's not something that's really, yeah, for sure. yeah. wow. For and, sure. And, and no one else is, even though you said like people have caught up, I don't see anybody doing the exact same thing as you guys, like over, like no, in totality. which is cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you see like the beef cheeks have caught on, like, you know, obviously like Hector and Palmyra, yeah. like out in South Carolina is doing that. And then, you know, lots of people like there's a guy in like Minnesota doing that kind of stuff, you know, the beef cheeks. And now like, you know, there's a bunch of places in the state that are doing whole hog now, but you know, when Evan, when they started doing whole hog and I could be wrong on this, but I think they were one of only like two barbecue joints in the entire state that offered whole hog on their menu every day when they were open. The mm -hmm. only other place that I can think of that did that from the start is Fiji's. Yeah. That's the only one I can think and, of too. Yeah. And then I, I think Cadillac does it every day that they're open now. I know they were doing it just like one, one sat whatever Saturday they were open a month, they were doing it. And I think they're open like every Saturday now. And then, you know, Leonard did it for a while. And I think there's a ton of people doing whole hog now, but, but yeah, not every mean, day. When first started, they really like were some of the first people doing it. And I really think that, and I don't know if he would agree with this, but I think a lot of people should credit Brad for helping bring Brad and Evan, but really Brad for building that chud box and like helping bring back and like modernize direct heat barbecue. Obviously direct heat barbecue has always been a thing in the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. It's always been a thing in West Texas, you know, like Cooper's and all of that stuff. They were always cooking like over coals and Opie's has always been doing kind of stuff like that. But I really think that, and somebody would have done it. It's not to say that and they didn't invent, mm -hmm. you know, this, style of barbecue obviously but i really think that they were like some of the driving forces behind like getting it back on the map and like getting it cool again like patrick had been cooking whole hog for a while and i want to say i don't know if he was cooking them in his lane or if he was if he had a, a good question like a, i don't i can't remember he may have been doing some live fire stuff i want to say like i know he did like a, a luau roast like 10 years ago at southern goods he probably did that direct you know he's probably one of the people to credit on that too but really i think brad and evan like uh making the chud box like a primary sort or like a primary source of like what we were of our menu was really cool and was like they were some of the first to like really be doing that again yeah that's that is really interesting i never really thought about it and it's so there's there's like a lot of different pieces to that puzzle it's not just it's not just yeah, Evan, it's not just sure. Sawyer, it's not just Brad. It's like it, there's a lot of different and when you when you started because you said like you couldn't I was I was rewatching <laughs> the beginning and you're talking about like yeah cutting the onion and all that. Now what did you do? <laughs> I, can you do you cook whole hog yourself? I had never done it. I built a uh, so so Aaron Franklin had the like the PBS like videos, but he also had the TV show right. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the episodes of the TV show was like, he does like a luau in his backyard and he builds this cinder block. Pit. It was like, I don't know. He, I think there was only like 10 episodes or so. And this was like the second or third oh, one. Something like that. You, for, a lot, for a while, you could still watch them for free on uh, PBS's website. I don't know if you still can. But anyways, he built this like cinder block pit and it was like two cinder blocks high, like 10 cinder blocks long. Like it had like, a couple doors for like entry to like shovel coals underneath and it was just like uh 16 inch like expanded metal like on there as the grate which is like the same grates that everybody uses in their barbecue pits basically yeah. but anyways i watched this video like a, like probably a dozen times <laughs> and i like i studied and i counted the blocks and so that summer i like i leveled a spot in my backyard in my parents' backyard. Uh, and then I built that cinder block pit and started cooking like direct heat stuff. But I had no idea what I was doing, like no clue. Uh, I like burned a bunch of ribs and burned a bunch of chicken and pork chops and just made some like really, really bad inedible food a lot of times and like 
didn't know like how thick of stuff I should get or like then I like was burning stuff too much so I raised it again but anyways I still have that direct heat pit and I'm better at using it now but I don't get to use it like near enough there's weeds growing and stuff in it oh so it's still there like you didn't you didn't disassemble it it's actually still no no it's still there it's still there yeah I'll cook on it like this coming weekend or next week next week is thanksgiving yeah. no we did the last one on halloween now we're now we're right before <laughs> thanksgiving. when you came on board they were doing a whole hog did you get yeah so i had i that, had or? never cooked a whole hog i mean be outside of like me like messing around in my backyard i never like, actually done direct heat stuff it's my first it's my first day i don't remember i don't remember for sure it was probably a wednesday or thursday it was i think it was a, it was a wednesday wednesday was my first day and i uh and I staged on a Wednesday. So I definitely like was around, around the hog. I probably like threw some coals in or underneath, or underneath it. I, but I had no clue what I was doing. I really, and this sounds really bad, but I cooked hog for probably six months to a year before I ever like stepped, like stood back and was just like, what, like, how do I do this? Like, what am I doing? Like, I was just kind of doing it and was just like, yeah, you know, this is like, this is it like just listening to everybody and then it wasn't until I really like took a step back and was like okay like why am I doing what I'm doing and then I really started to like now I've kind of started to figure it out I'm still not a great hog cook because we don't cook whole hogs we cook like we get in half hogs and then we break them down we, we take the ham off for sausage so I mean we do cook the whole hog but like when you order the pulled whole hog it's really just like the front two quarters of it mm -hmm. So, or front two thirds of it. There's only three yeah. parts, so it wouldn't be quarters. Uh, <laughs> well, you got the head. I Depends on you. There's quarters, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we take the hands off and make sausage, and then it's the bellies and the shoulders that we cook. So, like, when, when you see these videos of, like, Rodney Scott or Sam Jones or all these guys yeah. that, like, cook the hogs and they flip them and they do all this stuff, it's like, I kind of understand that, and I think that, like, if you gave me the tools to do that, I think I could cook it and I think I could do it without catching it on fire. But, uh, <laughs> but I don't know how good it would be because I, I don't have any experience like doing it in that style. I do think hog cooking though is one of those things and not to get off on a tangent. Or no, anything, this is great. But I think, I think hog cooking is one of those things that is really cool because it's so unlike brisket because, or it's, it's not unlike brisket. But you know how, like, cooking briskets has become homogenous now, mm -hmm. right? Since Aaron, like, wrote this book and kind of, like, laid out the playbook. I heard Billy Durney say that on a podcast, like, four years ago, and I've been stealing it ever since. It's great. He laid out this playbook, this playbook, right? And so everybody cooks brisket, like, the Franklin way or mm -hmm. the, you know, like, whatever way now. It's like crack the code kind of, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it's like super homogenous. And no matter where you go in the country, like brisket's kind of gonna look the same now, right? Like it's gonna sort of be trimmed the same way. It's gonna be cut right. It's gonna be like rested, like, you know, all, all of this stuff, like, it's easy to do. I think with hog, it's like brisket was 15 years ago. Interesting. Yeah. Where it's like, everybody's cooking it differently. Like if you look at, uh, if you look at Zach, Parker, like mm -hmm. at B. Scott. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. I mean, he's cooking like on cardboard, you know, yeah. which is crazy. And that's the best hog I've ever had. Yeah, I was going to say, because I, you, when you had visited, when you went out there, you actually. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 I went two days in a row, actually. I thought it was great. I, I, oh, like, I want to go so badly. Like, it was, uh. it, yeah. It's, it's like nothing I've ever had. It was so cool. Uh, and Lexington, who knows? Uh, who knew? If you just want to, you know, if you want to have a good barbecue joint in your state, just name yeah. a town Lexington. <laughs> Yes. Exactly. We need Lexington, <laughs> California. I'll open yeah. up my first spot. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but this like that hog kind of blew my mind. And then like I know that, and I don't know exactly, but I know Sam Jones and uh Rodney Scott kind of do theirs differently, whether they start like skin side up or skin side down, and like when to salt and when to flip and like all of this stuff. And then some of the some of the like better hog I've had too was Tyler Park did a hog i think i talked about this uh yeah i think you did last tyler hart did this hog and that was really really good and i know he learned from zach but i think he even cooked it differently than did zach you know, oh tyler learned from zach 
I think so. I, I'm cool. pretty wow. sure. I'm pretty sure Tyler has spent a bunch of time with Zach. Wow, that's um, cool. And I may be misquoting that, but I'm pretty sure. It, it's, but yeah, it, think, like it falls in pattern as to what you would think. Yeah. For sure. I think hog is one of those things though. That's it's just so interesting. Like even the way Patrick, he just cooks his hog. Like he cooks it like or they used to, I, I you know, I don't want to say what they do now because I don't necessarily know what they do now, but if yeah. I remember right, the way they were doing it uh, when they were in Greenway was they cooked it like in portions on the rotisserie and that hog is fantastic but you would never know that it was like it wasn't cooked like as a whole thing and like over live coals or anything like that it's fantastic and it's just like the hog at Leroy and Lewis I really am super proud of that hog I think it's really really great but I think the way that we do it now especially the way that we do it now is like super unconventional but it makes sense for what you know. I mean, it. it makes sense yeah, for no, us. Yeah, and it always no made other. sense the way that Brad and Evan have done it because like they needed the hams to make sausage mm-hmm. and they needed like the chug box is only so big. And so they had to break it into portions and all yeah. of this stuff. Like it's really cool. It's really cool how it's just so different all yeah, the way around. No, that, I never thought about it. And I'm glad you brought that up. Now, when you brought, when you talk about B.E. Scott, did you, the Midland, did you have that Midland part that I did? So the first day I went, I did not have the Midlands. And I was like, oh, this is like cool. This is like good. And I was just like, this is like old school barbecue, I guess, you know, because it's just like pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like just like sandwiches on the menu there. I, I can't so. remember. right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just like an extra large or a large or whatever. And so it's like I got a sandwich. And you can choose two different slaws on it. It's mayo-based slaw or vinegar-based slaw. And I don't remember which one I got first and which one I got second, but I know I got both of them. And so I got that and it's like a bag of chips and a mellow yellow. And then the next day I went back because they were sold out of the Midlands the first day. I went back. Uh, Joey Garcia like went up there and met me and he and I drove out there oh, cool. uh, the second day. And we got like Midland sandwiches, bag of chips, and a mellow yellow. I don't know what he had soda but that's what i always get and the second day i was like holy crap he's like this is incredible and then zach uh like went and showed us around and we like hung out with him for a while and he's just the nicest guy ever Very nice yeah yeah he's just like Super. yeah yeah he's a, a unique individual and just yeah like so yeah. he cares so much about his community too it's yeah he's it, yeah i heard that he just bought another barbecue place i'd heard the same thing i don't know what yeah. i think he was like it was a struggling one and he's gonna open it up in a while right like in a little while yeah that's really cool i, I love to hear stuff someone like said that. it on i think on my my show uh, oh really i, I think so <laughs> there you go someone, someone mentioned it like i'll go back in the the record. actually <laughs> i wish this was all digitized somehow like they like transcripts like it would be nice i should have that would Give be it nice a few years, I'm sure it will be. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably someone, maybe someone is in a different country. But they, uh, that's okay. Yeah. So when you, so so describing Leroy and Lewis, that's how you just can you tell us something about Evan and about Sawyer that we maybe don't know? Yeah, for sure. I think with Evan, if there's something people don't know about him, is that he can kind of just pull anything out of thin air. Hmm. I don't think that ever really has like sometimes he'll have like the idea of an idea but he doesn't ever really have the plan right he's not the best with like planning or anything and uh i think that like ends up like working to his advantage sometimes and i think sometimes it probably doesn't but he just is really good about just being like okay like i always say that like he's always playing chalk right where he's just like, all right, we have these like three ingredients and he's just going to grab them and he's just going to like whip something up and it'll be really quick and it'll end up being really good. You know, I think he's like really good at just like getting it together and like being really good at that. I will say something, something that he's really good at as well. And I'm going to steal this directly from him because we actually just had a meeting going over our strengths and weaknesses. (laughs) So I'll, I'll steal this right from him. Something he's really, really good at too is building a team and he said this and he i think if you obviously if you look back at friedman's and then to now i think he has always been really good at cultivating an environment that people want to work in and always like pushing the limits and he's really really great at just like pushing people up and it's like when i started and when anybody else starts it's like you're 
not necessarily like that you're you are anyone but he always makes you feel like that and he always goes out of his way to like listen to you and listen to your ideas I don't think any idea to him is ever too small or too big I think that he'll always hear you out and he's open to like you kind of doing anything he's really really great about that he like creates a good environment for that for sure that's great and I know that he when he gave me a list of his books he a couple of them were that related to team building and company building like it was like so that's yeah. how his mind works that's something that he, he it's important to him for sure yeah i think he definitely like thinks a lot a lot like that and he and i are similar in the way that whenever it comes down to stuff like that i think we both kind of look at it in like a sports term and we're just like how can you be the best coach and how can you like build this environment and how can you like push people up and he and i's like styles are very different i think but I think some of it is very similar, at least in the way we think of like always putting it in sports terms. <laughs> no, and that makes sense. Yeah. And it is, it's a great analogy. And also too, I think a lot of people go into the barbecue business, just want to make great barbecue and maybe open a yeah. restaurant because it'd be fun to have a restaurant and sell out and do this, but not realizing like you have to build a great team and you also have to build a great team that you can step away from every so often to get for, sure. for your own mental. Yeah, life. for sure. That's great. So thank you for that. And then for Sawyer, what's, I know that, uh, when I asked Evan this question, he said she's a great mom. But I, I would love to hear what, you, <laughs> what else. What else do we do? We know? Do we not know about Sawyer? Uh, well, I would also agree with that. I think with Sawyer, I think uh, for one, I think we could say just about anything because I feel like people still don't really know who she is, which yeah. is crazy. I feel uh, the same way. Yeah. But yeah, she she definitely flies under the radar. But she's the, I mean, she's like. It's like the one in the Wizard of Oz, you know. She's she's the she's the man behind the curtain. Yeah. She's yeah, she's not the face that runs the place, but she does she does everything. Yeah. You know, she's the best thing that I think about Sawyer that I don't think anybody would necessarily know is I think if you know her, you know this, but if you don't know her, to kind of go along with her being a really good mom, she is uh, one of the most like caring individuals that I have ever been around, oh. and I think that she. Uh, I think sometimes like even to like a fault, she like wants the best for everyone in the organization. And I think I've worked for a lot of people and I've worked for a lot of really good people, but I don't think that I could say anyone has ever truly cared Hmm. for every single person on the staff as much as Sawyer does. I think she like, she really like makes it a purpose to like love, and nourish and like really make sure that everyone is thriving and getting what they want and you know just getting the most out of everything which I think is really great I mean Sawyer is definitely like hands down best boss I've ever had and that's not a slight at anybody else or anybody Mm -hmm. that I've worked for but I love Sawyer Lewis and I would do I, I would do anything for her I mean she's the best yeah she definitely like when I moved when I moved to Austin, I didn't really like know a lot of people here or anything. And she definitely like, I, I felt like for that first year that I was here for sure, she was, you know, she was my mom for sure. Oh, that she, is like, she really like, yeah, she really took me in. And I really like, I don't know that I've ever been like that close uh, with anybody. The, there was like a, at least a year to like six months where Sawyer and I spent like nearly every night together and like just like super super close and i wouldn't have like that's never we've never been necessarily that close since then just because you know life comes in and and you know obviously she's had her kid now and you know once they open mama fried it kind of changed every it kind of changed the dynamic of everything but i wouldn't trade any of that for the world i mean she's that she's the absolute best that's yeah. huge that's amazing that's and that it doesn't surprise me one bit yeah for sure for sure yeah. yeah you talk to her for five minutes you can you can see that you can yeah. see how how absolutely genuine she is yeah and it's a, what a great partnership the two of them are it's just like it, it makes they're so different but so alike it's just amazing that that, that yeah, even it, it's happened. you know two sides of a coin for sure yeah, yeah definitely great. So because uh, t- Brad has turned <laughs> turned into something bigger than he was when you first started, like it's a, it's a, it makes sense too. Like he's you know he's involved the way he has. Uh, can you yeah. tell us something about Brad? Because a lot of people probably know Brad just from his show. So yeah, sure. what's so who is Brad? Who is Brad? 
who is Brad? Man, that's uh, I don't even know that he's figured that out yet. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I always tell people that what you see on camera and what you see out of Brad is I always say it's only like it's only like fifty percent of what he is and who he is. He is larger than life, absolutely. Like he is so like. I always feel like he's like toned is a toned down version of himself. Wow, that's amazing. He's uh, on camera. Like he is is always the life of the party, you know. He always like knows what to say to lighten the mood. Brad's great. Brad is another person that in the beginning of it all, I just spent like uh, an obscene amount of time with and we worked a lot of like really long prep days and a lot of those really long prep days were probably because I like really sucked at prep in the beginning and just like didn't did never I was you know just like take an hour to like cut you know cut five pounds of kale or you know something ridiculous like that but yeah no Brad is Brad's really great I think I think within like the first like two months of he and I working together and we only worked together like one day a week I think we probably had like 30 or 40 inside jokes already it was just like it it clicked real (laughs) real quick but that's uh, cool that's great yeah no brad's really great he's also just like a really well-rounded like smart guy who you know i guess if you like watch the watch the show and or watch uh, i said the show if you watch his channel and everything like that you follow him you know you probably think he's this, this like crazy party animal and everything but really and truly he is just like he's a sweetheart and I think that he is always uh, he's just always trying to push the limits of everything and always trying to be the best. And he's 100 percent a perfectionist. And he is just trying, you know, I think he's like really. And I don't know if he would say this, but I really think that he is just like thriving and really just being the best version of himself right now, which is really, really great. Yeah. And I'm super happy to see that, like. I think that there's no doubt that he's going to be the like number one barbecue YouTube guy, like forever. You know, I think that like, he's, I mean, Brad's he's got so great. much knowledge I, and he's got, yeah, obviously so, he has so, so much stamina much knowledge. too. Cause, Cause he puts out videos like, <laughs> like rapid fire. Like he is. Yeah. It's really, crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. How, many, how many he puts out and for him to still be putting out every Tuesday. And then he's got like all of the other stuff that he does too with it is crazy and then he's like part of that new thing like ember tv yeah well, uh, yeah that's yeah. guys yeah it's crazy he's like doing stuff for that and feels like he's always like with jeremy somewhere or he's like with us somewhere he's yeah guys a world traveler it's awesome yeah I, i'm so happy for him and he, he's he's worked hard and he's he has so much knowledge not just because he just has it he you know he he's soaked in all that knowledge and he's you know he, yeah i think he's he's now get, he, he's able and youtube is a great platform for that I, and especially for, for him it's a perfect it like it makes and, he, and you you can tell he's genuinely that's how he, like, he's not being phony about it it's it's yeah it's, it's like some of the stuff is kind of like he jokes about something but it's all it's all him you can just tell it and that's yeah. why people love him yeah i agree because you can you see how genuine he is yeah. and you see how invested in all of this stuff he is so i think one thing if i had to say that people probably don't know about brad or something people might think about brad at least is that like he's too big to get back to you and he, he doesn't respond to everybody on instagram and stuff but i will tell you that brad is terrible at responding to either like text calls or instagram he's he's just he's bad about it. he's bit he's a busy guy so you know for all the people out there that are just like man i like i message brad or i yeah. Or I email Brad or whatever. Well, if he hasn't got back to you, don't it, feel bad. It takes you know? time. Yeah. No, I've, I've <laughs> yeah, need other questions for like he's projects. A busy, and... He's a busy guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, pay attention to it. like look at the like take a step back like you did with the whole hog and look at what he's doing. And then, exactly. Then exactly. You'll realize yeah. that that's why he takes you know. And I I read those comments and stuff on his YouTube page too. It's like, man, if you had just like paid a little more attention, you probably would have heard what he said. You know, I feel like ninety percent of the questions that I hear him or see him get asked, it's like, it's out there, man. Like you uh-huh. could figure it out. You're just, uh-huh. you know. Can you talk about a little bit about your friendship with Blake and about the <laughs> how did the sandwich come about? Absolutely. I would I would love to be able to tell you what the, the like what actually happened with the sandwich. From from what I remember is like 
So Blake and I met via Instagram, which is, I'm sure, everyone that has ever been on this show and met Blake. That's how they met. Him. Yeah, that's how I met him too. Hey guys, he was great at reaching out to people. You uh-huh. know, he's he's still great at reaching yeah. out to people. Every time I see him, he knows, you know, ten thousand people. But yeah, like obviously I knew like he was a, another young guy cooking barbecue and I like saw that he was like working at his, he had a barbecue trailer and everything. And I was like, Oh, the food looks pretty good. Like that's really cool. And this is like when he's still in Dresden and you know, we talked like every once in a while on, on social media, on Instagram, like here and there. And I think he was probably like one of the first like barbecue people to follow me on Instagram, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> so we'd talk every, every once in a while. And then, um, uh, at some point he like came into truth and we kind of met it ended up to where we would talk like kind of like every day and he was eating basically brisket and turkey together like every day and he was just like you gotta try brisket and turkey together it was like the turkey is great it like balances out the fat and i was like okay cool yeah like that's cool and then he was just like a bunch of people are on it now it's like people are doing it and then his general contractor bubba that like built out the restaurant uh was coming in and was getting a sandwich that was brisket and turkey but i don't think that guy eats pimento cheese so that he was just getting brisket and turkey and i want to say like somewhere in that instagram text thread one of us was like hey you should put pimento cheese on it and he was like that's a great idea and he was like i'm gonna call this sandwich the bubba cole and i was like okay that's funny and i think it was just like on the specials menu one day and uh and it was just like i don't you know i didn't like think much of it and i don't think for the longest time i don't think the sandwich was ever on the menu i think it was just kind of like it was a special or it was just like an off the menu thing obviously like end of 2019 i went up there to see him and uh you know that was really cool we like hung out for a while and everything and i got to see it and but but the funniest part is I didn't eat a bubble cola while I was there. <laughs> no, which I don't know why I didn't. I, you know, I have no idea. I just didn't. End up, I've still never had one of his. I've, I've, I've like made them and stuff. But and I had one at John Brotherton's once, but I've still never like eaten one of his. But yeah, I, I really like don't know where the I'd love to like give a better story. Kind of happened one day and then all, all of a sudden it's like, did like i saw he posted and this has happened before but he posted something today about there's some place in australia that's serving a oh really i didn't see that no that's yeah. awesome <laughs> that's yeah cool. like, no, i know that people served- have stolen the bubble coal too for them they've oh yeah for that sure. was like serving <laughs> calling it the bubble coal and it's like it's yeah really? <laughs> yeah it's so funny too it's such a like it is it is a great combination but it's such a weird sell and such a weird like combination of things like I, it's so funny to me that it's like caught on and it's it's so big like jordy from barstool like wrote in it about an article and i remember like sending that to my brother and i was like this is the closest i'll ever get to like being in barstool sports like this is cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, that was crazy yeah, no, it's, yeah. It's, it, and it's it, but it makes sense and it's it's also blake is heavy into pimento cheese and so yeah it's for sure. and it's, I, he's fantastic yeah. by the way and so it's his really- mom's recipe i think right I think it's his aunt's recipe. Oh, his aunt's recipe. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And then, yeah, that's just, I, th- yeah. I just think it's awesome that you have a sandwich named after you. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, yeah, definitely props to him for doing that. That was yeah. really, he didn't need to do that, but it was very, it's very nice of him. I'm glad he did yeah. it. Well, can you yeah. tell us something about Blake that we don't know, maybe? Yeah. I mean, Blake is exactly like, however he is on message however he is like in person meeting people like he's that person 100 percent of the time all the time and i think at the end of the day blake is just like blake is just a down home country boy like good old boy he's just the best kind of like you know they they always say that they don't uh <laughs> they don't raise them like they used to you know they don't make them like they used to blake is you know he's he's cut from a different cloth. He's, he's a different breed, man. The guy will get up, you know, before the crack of dawn and drink nine cups of crappy coffee and, <laughs> and just start chugging along man. and he can work. He's a workhorse and he is just a sweetheart. And, yeah. and I love his draw. You know, it makes me wish that I had a real Southern draw. <laughs> yeah. 
and his, his little and little sayings. Talk. He has little sayings that he yeah, uses. you know, in a nutshell. In a nutshell. And all, all kinds of someone, stuff. someone else on my show did in a nutshell, and I'm like Blake. <laughs> in my head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It goes back to him. No, he's the, Blake is great, and I will say uh, something. Some people probably don't know about Blake is that that dude can eat. He can put down some food, and I don't think I don't know where it goes. He must sneeze it out. I don't know because he's not gaining any, any weight. But that dude can eat. And combinations of interesting things like he'll send me fast yeah, food combinations. Like with the, obviously, he came up with the uh, Bubba Cole, but yeah, he's eating all kinds of stuff. And man, like he can eat some spicy stuff too. I don't know how he does it. Good for him, though. That's that's awesome. That, he, he, I, he's one in a million. Definitely one in a million. I yeah, think. for just, sure. Yeah. And he's, just, yeah, he's great, man. Yeah, that's and I'm so proud of him with with, with what he's done and. That place Me have, too. You, have you gone to the new place? I have not been there. I've been by it. Yeah, I really want to go up. Casey and I really want to make another trip to Nashville. Uh I love Nashville. I'd, I'd love to go back. We talked about flying to Nashville and then renting a car and driving over there. I'd, I'd love That's to cool. go skip. We will get there eventually, but it's just it's taking longer than uh than I like. It's it's the whole money thing, you know. It turns money. out you have to have money to do stuff. Yeah. Who, who would have thought? You still do? Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that. <laughs> I thought you just do it. I thought everybody just does stuff. I didn't think... It seems like when you look online, everyone's just doing stuff all the time. Exactly. Yeah. I guess they're. I guess the whole manifesting thing works for them. <laughs> I just hadn't figured it out. Yeah, yet. it's the the secret. You get the book, the secret, <laughs> and that. Uh... It's starting now. I manifest the trip <laughs> to see Blake. Excellent. I'm gonna do the <laughs> same. Also, thing. like the manifest a thousand dollars a day <laughs> for the next fifty years as well. So. Into your bank account direct. Yeah. From yeah. I'm gonna start from. manifesting that right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. No, and you put it on like this is this is gonna be uh this is a document. This is your document. Yeah. Doc- right yeah. That's important. Yes. I guess how you do this. I don't know. I feel like Michael Scott when he's like, I declare bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh well um, I wanted to ask you on that note. <laughs> um, no, um could, could, what's your what's your favorite? What would be your favorite meal at Leroy and Lewis. And then can you talk a little bit about the new place too? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think, I think about this a lot and I think, I think my favorite meal at Leroy and Lewis would be, you can always go and get this. What I would do is I would go and get a two meat plate and I would get beef cheeks and whole hog, uh, which is going to come with two slices of bread. It's going to come with, Pickled jal- smoked and pickled jalapenos is going to come with uh, regular uh, dill pickles as well, both the beef sauce and the mustard barbecue sauce. And then it comes with your choice of two sides. And I would do the pork hash and rice with scallions and then the kimchi. Those are my two favorite sides. I also think all of that stuff kind of like plays really well together. But I'll give you an alternate answer as well. Cool. That I think that if I were to go and get that I could get like anything regardless of the day or anything like that, I would probably get uh, the flat iron that we're doing right now, the Claude. Um, It's fantastic. I think that we've done a really, really good job with that. It's kind of my baby. I uh, have obviously like heavily inspired by old school barbecue. Uh, And I didn't invent the Claude or I, I didn't invent this way to cook it even either, but definitely poured a lot of my like, heart and soul into the way that we're doing it now and uh, i'm really really proud of it i think we do a really good job yeah i the cod is like really really nice i'm really excited to be able to like showcase that how is it served like do you serve it with anything Uh, it serves slice and it's just the single singular muscle as opposed to like the whole cod so we take the flat iron off and cook it and it's like foil boated so it's got crispy bark as well and it's just really, really nice. It's got this fat seam that runs through the middle of it uh, because it's like flat iron steak, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's, so the way they do that is the seam that runs through the middle of it, they'll seam it out there and then they'll make it into two steaks. But we keep that seam in there and it cooks almost like beef cheeks. It's super, super nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's incredible. Yeah, it's really good. It's cool because I also like don't see anybody else like cooking it like that right now too. No. So is that, every, cool. is that every day? Yeah. Uh, well, Okay, no, I lied to you. I'm sorry. That is only uh, I have a terrible habit of just saying yes before I realize what someone's asked. Uh, <laughs> that is only Wednesdays and Thursdays right now. Okay. All right. Well, no, this is good because it's people are learning about you. That's something about 
Without you. I yes, haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that. I'll be like, wait a day. What did I say yes to that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that, that sounds one Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, so that's Wednesday and Thursday. The burger is a burger. I hate to ask, is it every day or is it? No, you're good. The burger is every day now. Okay. So I think originally the burger was nights only. And now the burger is like all day, every day. So Wednesday through Friday, when we're open, 11 to 9 p.m., yeah, we have the burger and we're trying to like, our joke, our joke in the kitchen, uh, like our kitchen manager, Matthew Bromley, he and I's joke all the time is like, doesn't matter where they come from, doesn't matter how many, we just need moi. We need moi burgers. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we ever say to each other, just moi burgers, you know? <laughs> so is that, so is our people, uh, so are people still getting the burger all the time? Is that something that's okay. like a super popular? Yeah, yeah, it's like we hardly had, we were pretty slow today because uh, it was just like a cold, like gray day here. And uh, I feel like, you know, yeah, we had a customer, like we had two customers every like five minutes or something like that, you know, or, or every 10 minutes or whatever. And it was just like, we weren't selling a lot of food, but we were selling a lot of burgers. It's wow. like, man, I don't know how that works. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah exactly. That, that, that is interesting. Is there a sweet spot of times to come? Like, is it, is the, yeah. are the weekends pretty busy still? Yeah, the weekends are still really busy. Uh, obviously, the nicer outside it is, the harder it is to get our food. Yeah, but I think this the best time to come for our burger is uh, Sundays are the worst day to come for the burger because we always have the least amount. Saturdays are the hardest day to come for the burger because the line's the longest. So Wednesday through Friday, right at eleven or right around like three thirty, is, is the best time because we cook two batches. And so the very first one is uh, ready at 11. Oh. The next one's usually ready, like somewhere in the afternoon, like that, like 3 30, 4 o'clock. Uh, yeah, I always say, like, recommend though getting to Leroy and Lewis, like right before we open. Because if you get there 10 minutes before we open, especially on a weekday, like you're not going to wait in any line. You're going to be the first person there. It's it's funny you can like see people start to congregate. They're like sitting at tables and they're looking over at the food truck and stuff. But the line doesn't really start except on like really busy like uh, weekends. You know, then people will start to line up. But it's I mean it's nothing like Franklin or anything okay. where it's people are there like four hours ahead of time. It's like <laughs> there's know, like 10 not people. seeing people at five in the morning yeah. on a Saturday. There was the... no for sure. Yeah, it's funny. It, it, like the line always works that way, but especially on busy days, it's like as soon as you look up, once you've opened, it's like, oh, now we have like now we have a hundred people in line. But like ten minutes ago, we had no no people. Isn't that so. wild? That's a weird thing. It's it is it's very strange. Yeah, really in general, weird. in general, I'm just like you know, it makes sense in the barbecue world. Like everyone listening to this or watching this, that you know, they know yeah. they've seen it. But it's just yeah, it still blows my mind that that could happen at a like on a consistent basis it's not something like a yeah. shoes like a shoe it's or really an iphone or something it's just i think it's like a big joke that like people that live, that live here in austin are always like doesn't matter like what they get in line for people just like want to wait in line in austin so <laughs> yeah i think people like people also like you can trade people to live and wait in line i think it's, yeah exactly. seriously it's like, humans are like that that's it's really weird What's, so how far off now is the second location and are there any new, new details about it or anything that you so we're still like a couple months away from opening. It should be like right around the beginning of the year okay. is what we're hoping or right after the beginning of the year, really. Yeah. I mean, basically like what the brick and mortar will be is an expanded menu and an expanded version of what Leroy and Lewis is now. So imagine going to the Leroy and Lewis food truck, but being able to like just take that idea and take those principles to the restaurant and being able to like come full circle on it, you know, and like, and be able to get your drinks in the same place and be able to get your food in the same place and everything. And, and just like really you know, be able to sit down and like eat off of real plates and stuff like that. It's just a, an expanded idea of what we're doing right now, which is really cool. But do you think you'll find yourself there more or the truck more? Yes, I think, yeah, I think I'll probably be there all the time. Yeah, okay. I doubt I'll be like at the food truck much. So are you training people or do you have people that you've set up for the, the, the that they have already said, like you guys as a team have set up at the truck? Yeah, and then... We have a, we have a really pretty good staff right now and a pretty like core staff of people, but we do not, we have not started like yet hiring for the brick and mortar, but that will happen here soon. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm, I'm incredibly excited for this. I, I really like 
think I was, you know, scared about certain things and certain aspects of it and everything. And I think like the more meetings that we're having about it and the more like the closer that we get, like going over and like looking at the project and seeing it and kind of like figuring out what our roles are going to be and stuff. That gets me incredibly excited. About it. What's your favorite, uh, not barbecue restaurant in Austin or your go-to? My favorite non-barbecue restaurant in Austin. And uh, I'm going to go with Little Deli. I love the Little Deli. I know that uh, I know that my boys, John Brotherton and uh, Kyle Stallings, also, also Aaron Franklin. It, it's a it's a real barbecue favorite of non-barbecue restaurants. And what is it exactly? Uh, I eat there all the time. It's just like a it's it's just like a really simple sandwich shop. It's what like almost all sandwich shops are here. It's like they don't make the they don't they don't make the bread. They don't make the uh they don't cure the deli meats either. But it's just like they use really high quality ingredients. It's really good stuff. They do like New York uh style pizza, like by the slice. I eat oh, there cool. all the time. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's really good. Excellent. Well, uh, and then what is there a a bucket list barbecue spot that you want to go to across the country? Or in Texas? Bucket list barbecue spot I'd like to go to. Yeah, I think Skylight Inn is really big for me. I would really love to go to Skylight Inn. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, yeah, I still haven't like been a, there. Yeah, no, no. That's a, I'm sure I mean, I'm sure every third answer is probably something like that. <laughs> no, but that's that's definitely on my list too. I just want to hear the the chopping. I want to hear the the sound of the chopping. Me too. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see all of it. I yeah. just it's so cool. That or like uh like Scott's, uh, the one in Hemingway mm-hmm. would be really cool. Oh, okay, killer! Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. Yeah, it, it's that. It just because I think it's, I think it's like a little store. Like I think it's just like it looks really cool. Yeah, I really want to yeah. go there. Yeah, yeah. So do I. Okay. Um, favorite movie. Favorite movie. Uh, I well, Christmas is coming up, so gotta go with the with the real classic here. You know, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. <laughs> <laughs> that one's amazing yeah that that's like a yeah. must a must watch every year if not oh for sure yeah. yeah uh probably uh sometime after football ends uh on next thursday i'm gonna i'm gonna turn that on <laughs> <laughs> nice that, that's awesome what's your uh favorite album or album or or music that you listen to while you cook because like, or is that both the same so uh so i listen so i generally listen to a lot of country music uh, a lot of like country and western older stuff um but right now since it's fall i'll i'll give this answer i listen to a lot of uh listen to a lot of like older jazz like classic jazz i listen to a lot of uh like uh vince gallardi like i listen to a lot of that like the you know the (laughs) just like the uh the charlie brown like the peanut uh like soundtracks and stuff like that i listen okay. to a lot of that is yeah. that why you posted it? did you post it today yeah or- I, I posted that today i've been listening to that a lot I probably everybody around me is probably tired of listening to that but. <laughs> that's cool though yeah. that's it definitely brings back memories like it's that time of year it is that time of year for sure yeah i'm trying to get all of the nostalgia and, and the you know the vibes right you know <laughs> do you like do you like those those um claymation christmas things oh that- yeah the uh like ranking and bass stuff yeah yeah yeah. great i love it yeah i'm gonna watch i'm gonna watch you know santa claus coming to town and uh obviously rudolph and all the the frosty one and then there's the yeah the frosty one miser cold miser one which one that's yeah uh, i think that's i think that's santa claus coming to town oh that is santa claus you're right you're right yeah Yeah, yeah, it is yeah Yeah. yeah. Uh but then they also did like there's another one that there's like a there's a remake of or not a remake but there's like a there's a second one of that, but I can't remember what it is. There's like Rudolph Shiny New Year, a bunch of those. I even watched the Easter one. There's, yeah, an, there's Easter an Easter one. one. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. That one, that one's really good. That one has uh-huh. uh, that one has Vincent Price as the bad guy in uh-huh. it, so you can't really beat that. I'm pretty sure Casey Kasem is the you're right. Is he the is Easter Bunny too. So yeah, yeah. that yeah, great all star all star cast. It's bizarre. That one's a bizarre one. That's really and it, that it's one also is too- really weird. Yeah, it's it's a weird in a good way, but it's also weird too because like nowadays you could probably get I'm sure you could stream it, but when I was a kid yeah. like you had to be lucky on that night to watch it. Like, oh, I know. Yeah, you had to watch it on like ABC or whatever it was on. Now yeah. that that's a whole other tangent. That irritates me to no end that you have to you have to have Apple TV or you have to have Apple what what are I I don't even know what the subscription is for it, but it's like you have to have Apple TV or whatever to watch uh the peanuts all the peanuts yeah. stuff now it's apple yeah they it's ridiculous them. yeah yeah 
And it's like, I've got to have all of these. I've got to have 12 different streaming services. I need to just buy them all on DVD. Yeah, well, in the old days, right, like just go to my parents' house, just get them all on VHS again. <laughs> yeah, that would be yeah, that would be good to have. I would love to have a VHS player. I, I think you could still get. They should bring that back. I think that. Would I, be, yeah, that's like that's probably end. the next thing they'll bring back. You know, vinyl like, is cool again. So now it's like, oh, cool, yeah. Well, Here's said, VHS. I think I saw that. Sixty like, second rewind. What is your definition of success? That's a really good question. I think it's I think it's varied like throughout my whole life. Um, but I would say right now, my definition of success, it's something that I would constantly try to define, but I think it would ultimately, uh, waking up in the morning, getting things done and then being able to come home and, you know, have, you know, see the cat, see Casey, have a good night and really feel like I at least was productive and uh accomplish something throughout the day so not necessarily a long-term success uh is the way i look at it but just like a very short term very like in the moment uh trying to just be successful every day i think for right now i think my definition of success is just being able to get through the day-to-day of all of it that's smart it's better i don't know it's better to be more present too it is that's yeah it's hard to be present, I think. At times. Yeah. <laughs> Not looking back at looking back at things or looking forward to too many things. Looking forward to things, do you foresee someday having your own place? Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely the goal. That's uh it's still like a few years it. out. But yeah, Casey and I like that's our goal is to uh to have a barbecue joint and to really like uh have a barbecue joint that represents the the two of us and really like what we have to say like in this uh, what has become a very like crowded space of barbecue, you know? <laughs> yeah. Would, yeah. Where do you foresee, would you foresee it in Austin? No, we, uh, we plan to like move back to the Houston area in the next, like, you know, anywhere from like next three to four to five years or so. So that would be the area. That would be, yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. Move back to the Houston area for sure. Yeah. Why, why it's just because of it's familiar or is it because you love Houston or is it, um, I think we both left Houston, uh, not necessarily with like a bitter taste in our mouth, but not ever thinking that that's where we would end up and just like wanted to leave. I think we both got here and we both kind of realized that our identity and our sense of community were like very deeply rooted in Houston. And I think it's funny because I think both her and I really kind of had like uh, separate journeys of getting to that. Uh, and we both, you know, we're like unhappy at times and everything and, and just didn't realize what we were searching for and what we were longing for. And I think we both kind of like got to that at different points, but then both kind of realized that we wanted the same thing and we wanted to be back with our families and we wanted that sense of community. Uh, yeah, so I think definitely we're kind of like the only way we go home is like if our like tails are tucked under uh, underneath our legs, you know, and that's like our last case scenario. And then I think we finally got to the point where we we're like, I think we want to go home. Like, I think that's what we want to do. So that's good. No, it takes time. Yeah. It does. And a lot of times it just takes some soul searching to really realize that, you know, that, sure. it, that it's okay to like, like it, just because you had an idea or a plan doesn't mean that you can alter it. You can. It's... Yeah, for sure. I think that all of that stuff, like, I think any good plan is uh, it's fluid, you know, yeah. it's, it's ever changing. It's ever growing. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any good plan that's just like one thing all the time have a great day and uh i'll talk all right soon. all right thanks so much well thanks so much have a happy thanksgiving you you as well take care